I am starting a huge shop organization project and that means I need cabinets, lots of cabinets. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build standard cabinets like this that can go in your kitchen, your pantry, or in my case, my shop. I'll show you how I build the carcass as well as the face frame and the doors and drawers. Now there is a ton of information to cover, so let's get started. To begin building these cabinet carcasses, I need some three quarter inch plywood and some quarter inch plywood for the backs and later the drawer bottoms. And the first thing that I need to do is break this plywood down into manageable chunks. Now, one of my favorite ways to break down plywood is to use one of these centipede work holders with a piece of foam laying on top. It's a quick and easy way to set up a horizontal work surface that allows me to cut all this plywood at a comfortable height and not be doing it down kneeling on the floor. To break this down, I'm gonna be using my track saw. Now, if you don't have a track saw, that's just fine. You can use a circular saw here instead. Uh, you just need to make sure that you have some kind of straight edge to act as a guide for your saw. And once I have all of my plywood blanks cut, I can take them over to the table saw to cut them to final dimensions. You can see here that I'm not removing much material, just really ripping off those ragged factory edges so that I get nice clean edges on all my parts. Next, I'll cut out a bunch of strips that are gonna be used for the stretchers and the toe kicks. And the stretchers here are all the same size at four inches wide and the toe kicks are four and a half inches wide. The next step is to cut a notch out of the bottom corners and this is gonna be where the toe kicks go. My favorite way to do this is using a bandsaw. I just set my fence to my mark and I cut until I reach the depth that I want. And to mark that depth, I'm using a mag switch as a positive stop. This is a great way to make sure that all of your cuts are repeated exactly the same so that your parts all end up alike. Now another way to cut these out if you don't have a bandsaw is to use a jigsaw with a square as a guide. You can see here that I just clamp everything down to my workbench and carefully run the jigsaw along the square. And if you use a fine tooth blade on your jigsaw, it really produces a nice clean cut on this plywood. After the notches are cut, I need to work on cutting grooves in the sides of the carcass, and this is gonna house the bottom and the back of the cabinet. And I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a couple of quick reference lines here. This is just to make sure that I cut these grooves on the right side of each of the carcass sides so that they mirror one another when I assemble the cabinet. Now, one way to cut these is using a router bit. I have a special router bit that is sized exactly for three quarter inch plywood, which is gonna give me a nice snug fit. Now, since the bottom of the cabinet is gonna sit just above the toe kick, I'm gonna use the toe kick itself to set the distance from the fence. This will ensure a perfect fit with no gaps at the bottom of the cabinet, and I don't have to measure anything. Each cabinet side is gonna get one of these grooves. Now once those are cut, I need to do the same thing, but this time making a quarter inch groove along the back of each side. This groove is gonna sit just in front of the stretcher, so again, I'm gonna use the stretcher to set the distance. And this is another special router bit that is sized specifically for quarter inch plywood. And keeping with our theme of alternate ways to do things, if you don't have a router or a router table, you can also cut these using a table saw. You can use a set of dado blades or you can do what I'm doing here and just use a single saw blade to make these cuts and take multiple passes. And once I make the first cut, I just move the fence a tiny little bit and make another pass, sneaking up on the cut until the plywood fits perfectly into the dado. Okay, one thing you should do now if you want adjustable shelves in your cabinet is to add the shelf pinholes. Doing it right now is way easier than once you already have the cabinet built. Now with that, the sides are done and it's time to build the carcasses. I'm gonna be using pocket screws as the primary joinery and so to do that, I need to go ahead and add pocket holes to all the stretchers. In my opinion, cabinet construction is the perfect application for pocket holes. They are plenty strong enough even without glue and they make building cabinets quick and easy. To get started assembling the cabinet, I need to add some glue to that bottom dado. Now this is the only place that I'm gonna be using glue because I won't be using screws here. I slide the bottom paddle into the dado and do the same thing on the other side before adding clamps. 
Next, I'm going to go ahead and spin the cabinet around so that I can add the back stretchers. Now, once the stretchers are in place, I go ahead and clamp the heck out of them to make sure that they don't go anywhere and I screw them into place. I then flip the cabinet onto its top and add two more stretchers. Now you'll notice that on that back stretcher, I'm using a scrap of quarter inch ply as a spacer, which is gonna represent the back panel of the cabinet. I'll show you what this looks like and why this matters in just a minute. All right, here we go, another flip. This time we're gonna flip it onto its front so that I can add the drawer divider. Now to add the drawer divider, I'm using two scraps of plywood that are the exact same size to act as spacers. I can then just clamp the drawer divider to the top stretcher like this before screwing it into place. Now here's where you can see the slot that I created for the back panel to slide into and this is the reason why I use that quarter inch plywood as a spacer. Okay, with all the stretchers installed, I can add the toe kick. And this also attaches with pocket screws. And this cabinet carcass is almost done. The last thing I need to do here is to cut some quarter inch ply to use for the back of the cabinet. And that just slides right into that pocket at the top and gets nailed into the back stretcher with a brad nailer. And just like that, we got ourselves a carcass. Now for this cabinet, I build it with a spot on the top for a single drawer and a door on the bottom. Now for my shop cabinets, I want a lot of drawer space. So I'm gonna show you how to modify this cabinet to make a four drawer version. The cabinet is built the exact same way. The only difference is the number of drawer dividers that you add. After installing the first drawer divider, I just use the spacers again and add a second divider and then a third using the exact same method. Spacing of the dividers is gonna depend on how big you want your drawers to be. I'm making mine with three of the drawers being the exact same size with a bigger drawer at the bottom. Now, if you wanna join two or more cabinets together into one unit, the way to do that is to just clamp them together so that the edges are all flush and screw them from the inside of the cabinet. In this case, I put the screws in the four drawer side so that they're never gonna be seen. One benefit to combining cabinets like this is that you can make one face frame to cover them both and that's what I'm gonna work on next. For my face frames, I'm gonna use hard maple to match the maple plywood that I'm using. If you're gonna be painting your cabinets, you could also use poplar as a slightly cheaper option here. After I cut my lumber into rough blanks, I go ahead and joint one edge to make sure that it's nice and straight. And then I just need to rip all these down to final width. My face frame will be mostly one and a quarter inch parts to give me a quarter inch overhang on both sides of the plywood and the part where the two cabinets meet in the middle will be two inches. I can then cut everything to length using a crosscut sled. Now again, a miter saw could be used here if you don't have a sled for your table saw. To join my face frame parts together, I'm gonna use pocket screws again. This is another thing that pocket screws are really good for because they're never going to be seen. One tip I have for you if you're screwing into really hard woods like this maple is to wax your screws to keep them from stripping or snapping off the heads. Another tip is to make sure that you clamp down each joint to keep the parts from shifting. With pocket screws, if you don't clamp that joint down tightly, it will move on you. And tip number three is to use a spacer to help you line up your face frame parts evenly. Here I'm using that spacer to make sure that I get a proper distance between all my drawer dividers. And that's pretty much it for making a face frame. I give each of my face frames a good once over with 120 grit sandpaper and then 180 grit sandpaper and this is going to get rid of any of the mill marks on the maple and it's also going to make sure that those joints are all nice and flush. To attach the face frames to the cabinets, I'm going to use glue and clamps. Now, if I were going to paint the cabinets, I would go ahead and use a brad nailer to fix the face frame. I could fill the holes in before I painted it and you wouldn't see them. But since this is going to be raw maple, I'm just going to go ahead and clamp them and wait for the glue to dry so that I don't have any visible nail holes on the face. Now, when it comes to drawers, you have a couple of different choices of material. You could use hardwoods like poplar, maple, or oak, 
which I would do if this was a project for my kitchen or a bathroom. But for all other cases, I like using 5 8 inch Baltic birch plywood. I think it looks really nice all sanded up and finished, and it works well for office projects, pantries, and other built-in projects, or in my case, shop cabinets. After cutting up all the parts that are going to make the four sides of each drawer, I need to cut a quarter inch dado along one side. This can be done using the table saw the same way that I cut the dados in the side of the carcass to hold the back panel. Again, I just slowly sneak up on the cut until the drawer bottom material fits snugly like this. Okay, now I actually messed up by putting dados in the drawer backs. Well, I didn't really mess up so much as I just decided that I wanted to show you a different way to build the drawers. I think this way is better. So instead of having that dado on the back, I want to go ahead and cut those drawer backs just above that dado. This is going to allow me to slide the drawer bottom in from the back once the drawer is already assembled. You'll see what I mean in a minute. To assemble the drawer, lay out your parts with the grooves facing out. Your front and back parts will have the pocket holes in them and the sides won't. Arrange the parts so that the front and back sit inside the sides and clamp them together making sure that the dados line up all the way around the drawer. Then just go ahead and screw everything securely together. Now you can just slide that drawer bottom into the grooves from the back side nice and easy. Sometimes a little tap here helps. Then you could just use screws or brad nails to fasten the bottom into place. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now for these cabinets, I'm gonna install full extension side mount slides. To attach the slides to the drawer, go ahead and set that drawer on a flat reference surface and set the slide on the same surface lining up the front of the slide with the front of the cabinet like this. This is the easiest way i found to consistently install these drawer slides on both sides perfectly. Then I go ahead and remove the part of the slide that goes inside the cabinet by pressing the little tab that releases the locking mechanism and they slide right off. Now to install these slides into the cabinet, I get myself a piece of scrap plywood that is cut to the exact height of my first set of drawer slides on the top side of the cabinet. I then just rest my slide right on top of that scrap and screw it into place. I can move the scrap over to the other side and repeat that same process. You'll also see that I'm using a quarter inch strip of plywood to act as a spacer so the slides won't be blocked by the face frame. And after repeating that process on all my cabinets, I take my scrap plywood and I cut it down to match the height of the next set of slides. I then install those the same way and then I measure for my next set and repeat that process all the way down the cabinet. I can then pop my drawers into place and now we have something that really looks like a cabinet. All I need to do now is dress up the front. To begin making the frame and panel fronts, I need to cut all my frame parts, and again, I'm going with hard maple. All of these parts are going to be two inches wide because that's what I think looks the best, but this is really up to you what size you choose. Now after cutting all the frame parts to length, I go ahead and add a quarter inch groove down one side of each piece. This is where the center panel is going to go. I then need to cut a tongue or a tenon on the ends of the top and bottom frame pieces. These will be used to connect the frame together. Now to do this operation, I'm using a special jig called a tenoning jig. My tenoning jig attaches to the auxiliary fence of my table saw. Basically what a tenoning jig does is it allows you to make these very precarious vertical cuts safely and accurately on your table saw. I'm also using a dado stack here to make these cuts mainly for speed. You can do this with a single saw blade, but you'll need to make multiple passes, which is just going to take a bit longer. And this is what that tenon will look like. Isn't that awesome? And I made it all on the table saw. Now for the center panels, I like to use half inch plywood, and I'm going to go ahead and cut a rabbit around all four sides. Doing this will allow the side of the panels to go into the grooves of the frame. All right, to begin building the door, I go ahead and add glue to the tongues and insert them into the grooves on the frame sides. I can then just slide one of those panels into place like this. Then I can add the final frame side with more glue and tap everything into place before clamping it together. 
I also like to go ahead and get rid of any of that squeeze out around the joints. Just makes sanding a little bit easier later. Now to build the drawer fronts, I do the exact same process, just on a smaller scale. Now the benefit to using half inch plywood here is that the center panel will be flush with the back side of the frame. This will help by giving you a completely flat back to mount them to the drawers. Now once everything is out of the clamps, just like the face frame, I'm gonna sand these to 180 grit to make sure all those joints are nice and flush. All right, the last detail we need to attend to is the drawer pulls and the hinges. I need to drill the holes for the drawer pulls and I'm gonna use this really cool jig to do it. Now there are a lot of jigs like this out on the market, but this one is from True Position. It has adjustable stops that allow you to line up the drill guide to the top and side of the drawer to perfectly position your pull. And you can adjust the two drill guides to match up perfectly with whatever size pull you're using. This jig makes adding pulls to multiple drawers fast and repeatable. And for the door, I'm gonna go ahead and install hidden cup hinges. Now, sometimes you may hear someone say Euro hinges, that's the exact same thing. And to drill the pockets for the hinges, I'm gonna use another fancy jig. The drill bit here has a depth stop that cuts the perfect size pockets. You can see the hinge just drops right in that hole and I can go ahead and pre-drill those screw holes using a self-centering drill bit. This is just gonna put that pilot hole right in the center so that when you screw the hinge in, it doesn't wander off square. Now, you might notice that my bottom hinge here is located a little further from the edge than the top one is, and that's just to allow for something special that I have planned for this cabinet, which is gonna be revealed in a future video. And the same jig that I use for the drawer pulls will also work for the door pull too. Now to install the door, I have a nifty little trick where I make a makeshift spacer out of a couple of scraps of plywood that I attach to the bottom of the face frame using double-sided tape. I then set the door on that spacer and now I know that my door is exactly positioned right where I want it and I can go ahead and drill the pilot holes and screw the door into place. Now to install the drawer front on top of it, I have a dead simple process that makes installing drawer fronts much less of a headache. To begin, I go ahead and add a spacer strip one eighth of an inch thick on top of the door to create the reveal that I want. I then make sure it's lined up with the door on both sides. Now my trick for installing these drawer fronts is to go ahead and screw in from the front of the drawer using the two holes I drilled for the drawer pull. Now this gets the drawer firmly attached so that I can go ahead and open the drawer and screw it into place from the back side. I can then remove the screws from the front and use a drill bit to drill all the way through the drawer. I then just go ahead and add the pull and fasten it into place. I did the exact same process on the four drawer cabinet, just adding a spacer between each drawer as I work my way up the cabinet and bam, done. Whew, man, that was a ton of information. I think I covered it all, but if you do have any other questions, please leave those below in the comments. I'd love to help out. Also, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel and also hit the bell icon to be notified every time I release a new video. Speaking of videos, I've got a couple other ones floating around up here that I think you guys would really enjoy. So go ahead and check those out. And until next time, have fun in the shop.